Chapter 34 Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Figure 34.1 For humans, fruits and vegetables are important in maintaining a balanced diet. Credit. Modification of work by Julie Riberchik. Introduction All living organisms need nutrients to survive. While plants can obtain the molecules required for cellular function through the process of photosynthesis, most animals obtain their nutrients by the consumption of other organisms. At the cellular level, the biological molecules necessary for animal function are amino acids, lipid molecules, nucleotides, and simple sugars. However, the food consumed consists of protein, fat, and complex carbohydrates. Animals must convert these macromolecules into the simple molecules required for maintaining cellular functions, such as assembling new molecules, cells, and tissues. The conversion of the food consumed to the nutrients required is a multi-step process involving digestion and absorption. During digestion, food particles are broken down to smaller components, and later, they are absorbed by the body. One of the challenges in human nutrition is maintaining a balance between food intake, storage, and energy expenditure. Imbalances can have serious health consequences. For example, eating too much food while not expending much energy leads to obesity, which in turn will increase the risk of developing illnesses such as TYPE2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. The recent rise in obesity and related diseases makes understanding the role of diet and nutrition in maintaining good health all the more important. Chapter Outline 34.1 Digestive Systems 34.2 Nutrition and Energy Production 34.3 Digestive System Processes 34.4 Digestive System Regulation 34.1 Digestive Systems By the end of this section, you will be able to do the following. Explain the processes of digestion and absorption. Compare and contrast different types of digestive systems. Explain the specialized functions of the organs involved in processing food in the body. Describe the ways in which organs work together to digest food and absorb nutrients animals obtain their nutrition from the consumption of other organisms. Depending on their diet, animals can be classified into the following categories, plant eaters, herbivores, meat eaters, carnivores, and those that eat both plants and animals, omnivores. The nutrients and macromolecules present in food are not immediately accessible to the cells. There are a number of processes that modify food within the animal body in order to make the nutrients and organic molecules accessible for cellular function. As animals evolved in complexity of form and function, their digestive systems have also evolved to accommodate their various dietary needs. Herbivores, omnivores, and carnivores herbivores are animals whose primary food source is plant-based. Examples of herbivores, as shown in figure 34.2 include vertebrates like deer, koalas, and some bird species, as well as invertebrates such as crickets and caterpillars. These animals have evolved digestive systems capable of handling large amounts of plant material. Herbivores can be further classified into fugivores, fruit eaters, granivores, seed eaters, nectivores, nectar feeders, and folivores, leaf eaters. Figure 34.2 herbivores, like this, a, mule deer and, b, monarch caterpillar eat primarily plant material. Credit A. Modification of work by Bill Ebison. Credit B. Modification of work by Doug Bowman. Carnivores are animals that eat other animals. The word carnivore is derived from Latin and literally means, meat eater. Wild cats such as lions, shown in figure 34.3a and tigers are examples of vertebrate carnivores, as are snakes and sharks, while invertebrate carnivores include sea stars, spiders, and ladybugs shown in figure 34.3b. Obligate carnivores are those that rely entirely on animal flesh to obtain their nutrients. Examples of obligate carnivores are members of the cat family, such as lions and cheetahs. Facultative carnivores are those that also eat non-animal food in addition to animal food. Note that there is no clear line that differentiates facultative carnivores from omnivores. Dogs would be considered facultative carnivores. 948 Chapter 34 Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Access for free at OpenStax.org Figure 34.3 Carnivores like the A. Uh, lion eat primarily meat. The B. Ladybug is also a carnivore that consumes small insects called aphids. Credit A. Modification of work by Kevin Pluck. Credit B. Modification of work by John Sullivan. Omnivores are animals that eat both plant and animal-derived food. 
In Latin, omnivore means to eat everything. Humans, bears, shown in figure 34.4a, and chickens are example of vertebrate omnivores. Invertebrate omnivores include cockroaches and crayfish, shown in figure 34.4b. Figure 34.4 omnivores like the a bear and b crayfish eat both plant and animal based food. Credit a modification of work by Dave Menck. Credit b modification of work by John Sullivan. Invertebrate digestive systems animals have evolved different types of digestive systems to aid in the digestion of the different foods they consume. The simplest example is that of a gastrovascular cavity and is found in organisms with only one opening for digestion. Plata helminths, flatworms, tenophora, comb jellies, and cnidaria, coral, jellyfish, and sea anemones, use this type of digestion. Gastrovascular cavities, as shown in figure 34.5a, are typically a blind tube or cavity with only one opening, the mouth, which also serves as an anus. Ingested material enters the mouth and passes through a hollow, tubular cavity. Cells within the cavity secrete digestive enzymes that break down the food. The food particles are engulfed by the cells lining the gastrovascular cavity. The alimentary canal, shown in figure 34.5b, is a more advanced system. It consists of one tube with a mouth at one end and an anus at the other. Earthworms are an example of an animal with an alimentary canal. Once the food is ingested through the mouth, it passes through the esophagus and is stored in an organ called the crop, then it passes into the gizzard where it is churned and digested. From the gizzard, the food passes through the intestine, the nutrients are absorbed, and the waste is eliminated as feces, called castings, through the anus. 34.1 Digestive systems 949 figure 34.5, a. A gastrovascular cavity has a single opening through which food is ingested and waste is excreted, as shown in this hydra and in this jellyfish medusa. b. An alimentary canal has two openings. A mouth for ingesting food, and an anus for eliminating waste, as shown in this nematode. Vertebrate digestive systems Vertebrates have evolved more complex digestive systems to adapt to their dietary needs. Some animals have a single stomach, while others have multi-chambered stomachs. Birds have developed a digestive system adapted to eating unmasticated food. Monogastric. Single-chambered stomach as the word monogastric suggests. This type of digestive system consists of one, mono, stomach chamber, gastric. Humans and many animals have a monogastric digestive system as illustrated in figure 34.6 ab. The process of digestion begins with the mouth and the intake of food. The teeth play an important role in masticating, chewing, or physically breaking down food into smaller particles. The enzymes present in saliva also begin to chemically break down food. The esophagus is a long tube that connects the mouth to the stomach. Using peristalsis, or wave-like smooth muscle contractions, the muscles of the esophagus push the food towards the stomach. In order to speed up the actions of enzymes in the stomach, the stomach is an extremely acidic environment, with a pH between 1.5 and 2.5. The gastric juices, which include enzymes in the stomach, act on the food particles and continue the process of digestion. Further breakdown of food takes place in the small intestine where enzymes produced by the liver, the small intestine, and the pancreas continue the process of digestion. The nutrients are absorbed into the bloodstream across the epithelial cells lining the walls of the small intestines. The waste material travels onto the large intestine where water is absorbed and the drier waste material is compacted into feces. It is stored until it is excreted through the rectum. 950 Chapter 34, Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Access for free at OpenStax.org. Figure 34.6, A. Uh. Humans and herbivores, such as the bee, rabbit, have a monogastric digestive system. However, in the rabbit the small intestine and cecum are enlarged to allow more time to digest plant material. The enlarged organ provides more surface area for absorption of nutrients. Rabbits digest their food twice. The first time food passes through the digestive system, it collects in the cecum, and then it passes as soft feces called cecotrophies. The rabbit re-ingests these cecotrophies to further digest them. Avian birds face special challenges when it comes to obtaining nutrition from food. They do not have teeth and so their digestive system, shown in figure 34.7, must be able to process unmasticated food. 
Birds have evolved a variety of beak types that reflect the vast variety in their diet, ranging from seeds and insects to fruits and nuts. Because most birds fly, their metabolic rates are high in order to efficiently process food and keep their body weight low. The stomach of birds has two chambers, the proventriculus, where gastric juices are produced to digest the food before it enters the stomach, and the gizzard, where the food is stored, soaked, and mechanically ground. The undigested material forms food pellets that are sometimes regurgitated. Most of the chemical digestion and absorption happens in the intestine and the waste is excreted through the cloaca. 34.1. Digestive Systems 951 Figure 34.7 The avian esophagus has a pouch, called a crop, which stores food. Food passes from the crop to the first of two stomachs, called the proventriculus, which contains digestive juices that break down food. From the proventriculus, the food enters the second stomach, called the gizzard, which grinds food. Some birds swallow stones or grit, which are stored in the gizzard, to aid the grinding process. Birds do not have separate openings to excrete urine and feces. Instead, uric acid from the kidneys is secreted into the large intestine and combined with waste from the digestive process. This waste is excreted through an opening called the cloaca. Evolution Connection Avian Adaptations Birds have a highly efficient, simplified digestive system. Recent fossil evidence has shown that the evolutionary divergence of birds from other land animals was characterized by streamlining and simplifying the digestive system. Unlike many other animals, birds do not have teeth to chew their food. In place of lips, they have sharp, pointy beaks. The horny beak, lack of jaws, and the smaller tongue of the birds can be traced back to their dinosaur ancestors. The emergence of these changes seems to coincide with the inclusion of seeds in the bird diet. Seed-eating birds have beaks that are shaped for grabbing seeds and the two-compartment stomach allows for delegation of tasks. Since birds need to remain light in order to fly, their metabolic rates are very high, which means they digest their food very quickly and need to eat often. Contrast this with the ruminants, where the digestion of plant matter takes a very long time. Ruminants Ruminants are mainly herbivores like cows, sheep, and goats, whose entire diet consists of eating large amounts of roughage or fiber. They have evolved digestive systems that help them digest vast amounts of cellulose. An interesting feature of the ruminants' mouth is that they do not have upper incisor teeth. They use their lower teeth, tongue and lips to tear and chew their food. From the mouth, the food travels to the esophagus and on to the stomach. 952 Chapter 34, Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Access for Free at OpenStacks.org To help digest the large amount of plant material, the stomach of the ruminants is a multi-chambered organ, as illustrated in Figure 34.8. The four compartments of the stomach are called the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. These chambers contain many microbes that break down cellulose and ferment ingested food. The abomasum is the true stomach and is the equivalent of the monogastric stomach chamber where gastric juices are secreted. The four-compartment gastric chamber provides larger space and the microbial support necessary to digest plant material in ruminants. The fermentation process produces large amounts of gas in the stomach chamber, which must be eliminated. As in other animals, the small intestine plays an important role in nutrient absorption, and the large intestine helps in the elimination of waste. Figure 34.8 Ruminant animals, such as goats and cows, have four stomachs. The first two stomachs, the rumen and the reticulum, contain prokaryotes and protists that are able to digest cellulose fiber. The ruminant regurgitates cud from the reticulum, chews it, and swallows it into a third stomach, the omasum, which removes water. The cud then passes onto the fourth stomach, the abomasum, where it is digested by enzymes produced by the ruminant. Pseudo-ruminants Some animals, such as camels and alpacas, are pseudo-ruminants. They eat a lot of plant material and roughage. Digesting plant material is not easy because plant cell walls contain the polymeric sugar molecule cellulose. The digestive enzymes of these animals cannot break down cellulose, but microorganisms present in the digestive system can. Therefore, the digestive system must be able to handle large amounts of roughage and break down the cellulose. Pseudo-ruminants have a three-chamber stomach in the digestive system. However, their cecum, a pouched organ at the beginning of the large intestine containing many microorganisms that are necessary for the digestion of plant materials, 
is large and is the site where the roughage is fermented and digested. These animals do not have a rumen but have an omasum, abomasum, and reticulum. Parts of the digestive system The vertebrate digestive system is designed to facilitate the transformation of food matter into the nutrient components that sustain organisms. Oral cavity The oral cavity or mouth, is the point of entry of food into the digestive system, illustrated in figure 34.9. The food consumed is broken into smaller particles by mastication, the chewing action of the teeth. All mammals have teeth and can chew their food. The extensive chemical process of digestion begins in the mouth. As food is being chewed, saliva, produced by the salivary glands, mixes with the food. Saliva is a watery substance produced in the mouths of many animals. There are three major glands that secrete saliva, the parotid, the submandibular, and the sublingual. Saliva contains mucus that moistens food and buffers 34.1, digestive systems 953 the pH of the food. Saliva also contains immunoglobulins and lysozymes, which have antibacterial action to reduce tooth decay by inhibiting growth of some bacteria. Saliva also contains an enzyme called salivary amylase that begins the process of converting starches in the food into a disaccharide called maltose. Another enzyme called lipase is produced by the cells in the tongue. Lipases are a class of enzymes that can break down triglycerides. The lingual lipase begins the breakdown of fat components in the food. The chewing and wetting action provided by the teeth and saliva prepare the food into a mass called the bolus for swallowing. The tongue helps in swallowing, moving the bolus from the mouth into the pharynx. The pharynx opens to two passageways. The trachea, which leads to the lungs, and the esophagus, which leads to the stomach. The trachea has an opening called the glottis, which is covered by a cartilaginous flap called the epiglottis. When swallowing, the epiglottis closes the glottis and food passes into the esophagus and not the trachea. This arrangement allows food to be kept out of the trachea. Figure 34.9 Digestion of food begins in the a, oral cavity. Food is masticated by teeth and moistened by saliva secreted from the b salivary glands. Enzymes in the saliva begin to digest starches and fats. With the help of the tongue, the resulting bolus is moved into the esophagus by swallowing. Credit. Modification of work by the National Cancer Institute. Esophagus The esophagus is a tubular organ that connects the mouth to the stomach. The chewed and softened food passes through the esophagus after being swallowed. The smooth muscles of the esophagus undergo a series of wave-like movements called peristalsis that push the food toward the stomach, as illustrated in figure 34.10. The peristalsis wave is unidirectional. It moves food from the mouth to the stomach, and reverse movement is not possible. The peristaltic movement of the esophagus is an involuntary reflex. It takes place in response to the act of swallowing. Figure 34.10 The esophagus transfers food from the mouth to the stomach through peristaltic movements. A ring-like muscle called a sphincter forms valves in the digestive system. The gastroesophageal sphincter is located at the 954 Chapter 34, Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Access for free at OpenStax.org. Stomach End of the Esophagus In response to swallowing and the pressure exerted by the bolus of food, this sphincter opens, and the bolus enters the stomach. When there is no swallowing action, this sphincter is shut and prevents the contents of the stomach from traveling up the esophagus. Many animals have a true sphincter, however, in humans, there is no true sphincter, but the esophagus remains closed when there is no swallowing action. Acid reflux or heartburn occurs when the acidic digestive juices escape into the esophagus. Stomach A large part of digestion occurs in the stomach, shown in figure 34.11. The stomach is a sac-like organ that secretes gastric digestive juices. The pH in the stomach is between 1.5 and 2.5. This highly acidic environment is required for the chemical breakdown of food and the extraction of nutrients. When empty, the stomach is a rather small organ, however, it can expand to up to 20 times its resting size when filled with food. This characteristic is particularly useful for animals that need to eat when food is available. Visual Connection Figure 34.11 The human stomach has an extremely acidic environment where most of the protein gets digested. Credit. Modification of work by Mariana Ruiz Villarreal. Which of the following statements about the digestive system is false? A. 
Chyme is a mixture of food and digestive juices that is produced in the stomach. B. Food enters the large intestine before the small intestine. C. In the small intestine, chyme mixes with bile, which emulsifies fats. D. The stomach is separated from the small intestine by the pyloric sphincter. 34.1. Digestive systems 955. The stomach is also the major site for protein digestion in animals other than ruminants. Protein digestion is mediated by an enzyme called pepsin in the stomach chamber. Pepsin is secreted by the chief cells in the stomach in an inactive form called pepsinogen. Pepsin breaks peptide bonds and cleaves proteins into smaller polypeptides. It also helps activate more pepsinogen, starting a positive feedback mechanism that generates more pepsin. Another cell type, parietal cells, secrete hydrogen and chloride ions, which combine in the lumen to form hydrochloric acid, the primary acidic component of the stomach juices. Hydrochloric acid helps to convert the inactive pepsinogen to pepsin. The highly acidic environment also kills many microorganisms in the food and, combined with the action of the enzyme pepsin, results in the hydrolysis of protein in the food. Chemical digestion is facilitated by the churning action of the stomach. Contraction and relaxation of smooth muscles mixes the stomach contents about every 20 minutes. The partially digested food and gastric juice mixture is called chyme. Chyme passes from the stomach to the small intestine. Further protein digestion takes place in the small intestine. Gastric emptying occurs within 2 to 6 hours after a meal. Only a small amount of chyme is released into the small intestine at a time. The movement of chyme from the stomach into the small intestine is regulated by the pyloric sphincter. When digesting protein and some fats, the stomach lining must be protected from getting digested by pepsin. There are two points to consider when describing how the stomach lining is protected. First, as previously mentioned, the enzyme pepsin is synthesized in the inactive form. This protects the chief cells, because pepsinogen does not have the same enzyme functionality of pepsin. Second, the stomach has a thick mucus lining that protects the underlying tissue from the action of the digestive juices. When this mucus lining is ruptured, ulcers can form in the stomach. Ulcers are open wounds in or on an organ caused by bacteria, Helicobacter pylori, when the mucus lining is ruptured and fails to reform. Small intestine chyme moves from the stomach to the small intestine. The small intestine is the organ where the digestion of protein, fats, and carbohydrates is completed. The small intestine is a long tube-like organ with a highly folded surface containing finger-like projections called the villi. The apical surface of each villus has many microscopic projections called microvilli. These structures, illustrated in figure 34.12, are lined with epithelial cells on the luminal side and allow for the nutrients to be absorbed from the digested food and absorbed into the bloodstream on the other side. The villi and microvilli, with their many folds, increase the surface area of the intestine and increase absorption efficiency of the nutrients. Absorbed nutrients in the blood are carried into the hepatic portal vein, which leads to the liver. There, the liver regulates the distribution of nutrients to the rest of the body and removes toxic substances, including drugs, alcohol, and some pathogens. Visual connection figure 34.12 villi are folds on the small intestine lining that increase the surface area to facilitate the absorption of nutrients. Which of the following statements about the small intestine is false? A. Absorptive cells that line the small intestine have microvilli, small projections that increase surface area and aid in the absorption of food. b. The inside of the small intestine has many folds, called villi. c. Microvilli are lined with blood vessels as well as lymphatic vessels. 956 Chapter 34, Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Access for Free at OpenStax.org. d. The inside of the small intestine is called the lumen. The human small intestine is over 6 meters long and is divided into three parts. The duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. The C-shaped, fixed part of the small intestine is called the duodenum and is shown in figure 34.11. The duodenum is separated from the stomach by the pyloric sphincter which opens to allow chyme to move from the stomach to the duodenum. In the duodenum, Chyme is mixed with pancreatic juices in an alkaline solution rich in bicarbonate that neutralizes the acidity of chyme and acts as a buffer. Pancreatic juices also contain several digestive enzymes. 
digestive juices from the pancreas, liver, and gallbladder, as well as from gland cells of the intestinal wall itself, enter the duodenum. Bile is produced in the liver and stored and concentrated in the gallbladder. Bile contains bile salts which emulsify lipids while the pancreas produces enzymes that catabolize starches, disaccharides, proteins, and fats. These digestive juices break down the food particles in the chyme into glucose, triglycerides, and amino acids. Some chemical digestion of food takes place in the duodenum. Absorption of fatty acids also takes place in the duodenum. The second part of the small intestine is called the jejunum, shown in figure 34.11. Here, hydrolysis of nutrients is continued while most of the carbohydrates and amino acids are absorbed through the intestinal lining. The bulk of chemical digestion and nutrient absorption occurs in the jejunum. The ileum, also illustrated in figure 34.11 is the last part of the small intestine and here the bile salts and vitamins are absorbed into the bloodstream. The undigested food is sent to the colon from the ileum via peristaltic movements of the muscle. The ileum ends and the large intestine begins at the ileocecal valve. The vermiform, worm-like, appendix is located at the ileocecal valve. The appendix of humans secretes no enzymes and has an insignificant role in immunity. Large intestine The large intestine, illustrated in figure 34.13, reabsorbs the water from the undigested food material and processes the waste material. The human large intestine is much smaller in length compared to the small intestine but larger in diameter. It has three parts, the cecum, the colon, and the rectum. The cecum joins the ileum to the colon and is the receiving pouch for the waste matter. The colon is home to many bacteria or intestinal flora that aid in the digestive processes. The colon can be divided into four regions, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, and the sigmoid colon. The main functions of the colon are to extract the water and mineral salts from undigested food, and to store waste material. Carnivorous mammals have a shorter large intestine compared to herbivorous mammals due to their diet. Figure 34.13 The large intestine reabsorbs water from undigested food and stores waste material until it is eliminated. Rectum and anus The rectum is the terminal end of the large intestine, as shown in Figure 34.13. The primary role of the rectum is to store the feces until defecation. The feces are propelled using peristaltic movements during elimination. The anus is an opening at the far end of the digestive tract and is the exit point for the waste material. Two sphincters between the rectum and anus control elimination. The inner sphincter is involuntary and the outer sphincter is voluntary. Accessory organs The organs discussed above are the organs of the digestive tract through which food passes. Accessory organs are organs that add secretions, enzymes, that catabolize food into nutrients. Accessory organs include salivary glands, the liver, the pancreas, 34.1, digestive systems 957 and the gallbladder. The liver, pancreas, and gallbladder are regulated by hormones in response to the food consumed. The liver is the largest internal organ in humans and it plays a very important role in digestion of fats and detoxifying blood. The liver produces bile, a digestive juice that is required for the breakdown of fatty components of the food in the duodenum. The liver also processes the vitamins and fats and synthesizes many plasma proteins. The pancreas is another important gland that secretes digestive juices. The chyme produced from the stomach is highly acidic in nature. The pancreatic juices contain high levels of bicarbonate, an alkali that neutralizes the acidic chyme. Additionally, the pancreatic juices contain a large variety of enzymes that are required for the digestion of protein and carbohydrates. The gallbladder is a small organ that aids the liver by storing bile and concentrating bile salts. When chyme-containing fatty acids enters the duodenum, the bile is secreted from the gallbladder into the duodenum. 34.2 Nutrition and Energy Production By the end of this section, you will be able to do the following. Explain why an animal's diet should be balanced and meet the needs of the body. Define the primary components of food. Describe the essential nutrients required for cellular function that cannot be synthesized by the animal body. Explain how energy is produced through diet and digestion. Describe how excess carbohydrates and energy are stored in the body given the diversity of animal life on our planet. It is not surprising that the animal diet would also vary substantially. 
The animal diet is the source of materials needed for building DNA and other complex molecules needed for growth, maintenance, and reproduction. Collectively these processes are called biosynthesis. The diet is also the source of materials for ATP production in the cells. The diet must be balanced to provide the minerals and vitamins that are required for cellular function. Food requirements What are the fundamental requirements of the animal diet? The animal diet should be well balanced and provide nutrients required for bodily function and the minerals and vitamins required for maintaining structure and regulation necessary for good health and reproductive capability. These requirements for a human are illustrated graphically in Figure 34.14 Figure 34.14 for humans. A balanced diet includes fruits, vegetables, grains, and protein. Credit. USDA. Link to learning the first step in ensuring that you are meeting the food requirements of your body is an awareness of the food groups in the 958 Chapter 34. Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Access for free at OpenStacks.org nutrients they provide. To learn more about each food group and the recommended daily amounts, explore this interactive site, http colon slash slash openstacks.org slash l slash food underscore groups closing parenthesis by the United States Department of Agriculture. Organic precursors The organic molecules required for building cellular material and tissues must come from food. Carbohydrates or sugars are the primary source of organic carbons in the animal body. During digestion, digestible carbohydrates are ultimately broken down into glucose and used to provide energy through metabolic pathways. Complex carbohydrates, including polysaccharides, can be broken down into glucose through biochemical modification. However, humans do not produce the enzyme cellulase and lack the ability to derive glucose from the polysaccharide cellulose. In humans, these molecules provide the fiber required for moving waste through the large intestine and a healthy colon. The intestinal flora in the human gut are able to extract some nutrition from these plant fibers. The excess sugars in the body are converted into glycogen and stored in the liver and muscles for later use. Glycogen stores are used to fuel prolonged exertions, such as long-distance running, and to provide energy during food shortage. Excess glycogen can be converted to fats, which are stored in the lower layer of the skin of mammals for insulation and energy storage. Excess digestible carbohydrates are stored by mammals in order to survive famine and aid in mobility. Another important requirement is that of nitrogen. Protein catabolism provides a source of organic nitrogen. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins and protein breakdown provides amino acids that are used for cellular function. The carbon and nitrogen derived from these become the building block for nucleotides, nucleic acids, proteins, cells, and tissues. Excess nitrogen must be excreted as it is toxic. Fats add flavor to food and promote a sense of satiety or fullness. Fatty foods are also significant sources of energy because one gram of fat contains nine calories. Fats are required in the diet to aid the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins and the production of fat-soluble hormones. Essential nutrients While the animal body can synthesize many of the molecules required for function from the organic precursors, there are some nutrients that need to be consumed from food. These nutrients are termed essential nutrients, meaning they must be eaten, and the body cannot produce them. The omega-3 alpha-linolenic acid and the omega-6 linoleic acid are essential fatty acids needed to make some membrane phospholipids. Vitamins are another class of essential organic molecules that are required in small quantities for many enzymes to function and, for this reason, are considered to be coenzymes. Absence or low levels of vitamins can have a dramatic effect on health, as outlined in Table 34.1 and Table 34.2. Both fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins must be obtained from food. Minerals, listed in Table 34.3, are inorganic essential nutrients that must be obtained from food. Among their many functions, minerals help in structure and regulation and are considered cofactors. Certain amino acids also must be procured from food and cannot be synthesized by the body. These amino acids are the essential amino acids. The human body can synthesize only 11 of the 20 required amino acids. The rest must be obtained from food. The essential amino acids are listed in Table 34.4. Everyday Connection Let's Move. Campaign obesity is a growing epidemic and the rate of obesity among children is rapidly rising in the United States. To combat childhood obesity and ensure that children get a healthy start in life, 
First Lady Michelle Obama has launched the Let's Move campaign. The goal of this campaign is to educate parents and caregivers on providing healthy nutrition and encouraging active lifestyles to future generations. This program aims to involve the entire community, including parents, teachers, and healthcare providers to ensure that children have access to healthy foods, more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, and consume fewer calories from processed foods. Another goal is to ensure that children get physical activity. With the increase in television viewing and stationary pursuits such as video games, sedentary lifestyles have become the norm. Learn more at https colon slash slash let's move dot obama white house dot archives dot gov http colon slash slash openstacks dot org slash l slash let's move closing parenthesis 34.2 nutrition and energy production 959 water soluble essential vitamins vitamin function deficiencies can lead to sources vitamin b1 thiamine needed by the body to process lipids proteins and carbohydrates Coenzyme removes CO2 from organic compounds muscle weakness, beriberi, reduced heart function, CNS problems milk, meat, dried beans, whole grains vitamin B2, riboflavin, takes an active role in metabolism, aiding in the conversion of food to energy, fat and FMN, cracks or sores on the outer surface of the lips, cheliosis, inflammation and redness of the tongue, moist, scaly skin inflammation, seborrheic dermatitis, meat, eggs, enriched grains, vegetables vitamin B3, niacin, used by the body to release energy from carbohydrates and to process alcohol, required for the synthesis of sex hormones, component of coenzyme NAD+, and NADP+, pellagra, which can result in dermatitis, diarrhea, dementia, and death meat, eggs, grains, nuts, potatoes vitamin B5, pantothenic acid, assists in producing energy from foods, lipids, in particular, component of coenzyme of fatigue, poor coordination, retarded growth, numbness, tingling of hands and feet meat, whole grains, milk, fruits, vegetables vitamin B6, pyridoxine, the principal vitamin for processing amino acids and lipids, also helps convert nutrients into energy irritability, depression, confusion, mouth sores or ulcers, anemia, muscular twitching meat, dairy products, whole grains, orange juice vitamin B7, biotin, used in energy and amino acid metabolism, fat synthesis, and fat breakdown. Helps the body use blood sugar hair loss, dermatitis, depression, numbness and tingling in the extremities. Neuromuscular disorders meat, eggs, legumes and other vegetables vitamin B9, folic acid, assists the normal development of cells, especially during fetal development. Helps metabolize nucleic and amino acids deficiency during pregnancy as associated with birth defects, such as neural tube defects and anemia leafy green vegetables, whole wheat, fruits, nuts, legumes vitamin B12, cobalamin, maintains healthy nervous system and assists with blood cell formation. Coenzyme in nucleic acid metabolism anemia, neurological disorders, numbness, loss of balance meat, eggs, animal products vitamin C, ascorbic acid helps maintain connective tissue, bone, cartilage, and dentin, boosts the immune system scurvy, which results in bleeding, hair and tooth loss, joint pain and swelling, delayed wound healing citrus fruits, broccoli, tomatoes, red sweet bell peppers table 34.1960 chapter 34, animal nutrition and the digestive system access for free at openstacks.org. Fat soluble essential. Vitamins Vitamin function deficiencies can lead to sources vitamin A, retinol, critical to the development of bones, teeth, and skin. Helps maintain eyesight, enhances the immune system, fetal development, gene expression night blindness, skin disorders, impaired immunity dark green leafy vegetables, yellow orange vegetables, fruits, milk, butter vitamin D critical for calcium absorption for bone development and strength. Maintains a stable nervous system. Maintains a normal and strong heartbeat. Helps in blood clotting rickets. Osteomalacia. Immunity cod liver oil. Milk. Egg yolk vitamin E. Tocopherol. Lessens oxidative damage of cells and prevents lung damage from pollutants. Vital to the immune system deficiency is rare. Anemia. Nervous system degeneration wheat germ oil. Unrefined vegetable oils. Nuts. Seeds. Grains vitamin K. Filiquinone essential to blood clotting bleeding and easy bruising leafy green vegetables 
T Table 34.2 Figure 34.15 A healthy diet should include a variety of foods to ensure that needs for essential nutrients are met. Credit. Keith Weller, USDA Rs. 34.2, Nutrition and Energy Production 961 Minerals and their function in the human body Mineral function deficiencies can lead to sources calcium needed for muscle and neuron function. Heart health. Builds bone and supports synthesis and function of blood cells. Nerve function osteoporosis, rickets, muscle spasms, impaired growth milk, yogurt, fish, green leafy vegetables, legumes chlorine needed for production of hydrochloric acid, HCL, in the stomach and nerve function. Osmotic balance muscle cramps, mood disturbances, reduced appetite table salt copper, trace amounts, required component of many redox enzymes, including cytochrome C oxidase. Cofactor for hemoglobin synthesis copper deficiency is rare liver, oysters, cocoa, chocolate, sesame, nuts iodine required for the synthesis of thyroid hormones goiter seafood, iodized salt, dairy products iron required for many proteins and enzymes, notably hemoglobin, to prevent anemia anemia, which causes poor concentration, fatigue, and poor immune function red meat, leafy green vegetables, fish, tuna, salmon, eggs, dried fruits, beans, whole grains magnesium required cofactor for ATP formation, bone formation, normal membrane functions, muscle function mood disturbances, muscle spasms whole grains, leafy green vegetables manganese, trace amounts, a cofactor in enzyme functions, trace amounts are required manganese deficiency is rare common in most foods molybdenum, trace amounts, acts as a cofactor for three essential enzymes in humans, sulfite oxidase, xanthine oxidase, and aldehyde oxidase molybdenum deficiency as rare phosphorus a component of bones and teeth. Helps regulate acid-base balance. Nucleotide synthesis weakness, bone abnormalities, calcium loss milk, hard cheese, whole grains, meats potassium vital for muscles, heart, and nerve function cardiac rhythm disturbance, muscle weakness legumes, potato skin, tomatoes, bananas selenium, trace amounts, a cofactor essential to activity of antioxidant enzymes like glutathione peroxidase. Trace amounts are required selenium deficiency is rare common in most foods table 34.3962 chapter 34. Animal nutrition and the digestive system access for free at openstacks.org. Mineral function deficiencies can lead to sources sodium systemic electrolyte required for many functions. Acid base balance. Water balance. Nerve function muscle cramps, fatigue, reduced appetite table salt zinc. Trace amounts, required for several enzymes such as carboxypeptidase, liver alcohol dehydrogenase, and carbonic anhydrase anemia. Poor wound healing, can lead to short stature common in most foods greater than 200 mg per day required table 34.3 essential amino acids amino acids that must be consumed amino acids anabolized by the body isoleucine alanine leucine selenocysteine lysine aspartate methionine cysteine phenylalanine glutamate tryptophan glycine valine proline histidine serine threonine tyrosine arginine asparagine the human body can synthesize histidine and arginine but not in the quantities required especially for growing children. Table 34.4 Food energy and ATP animals need food to obtain energy and maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis is the ability of a system to maintain a stable internal environment even in the face of external changes to the environment. For example, the normal body temperature of humans is 37 degrees Celsius, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Humans maintain this temperature even when the external temperature is hot or cold. It takes energy to maintain this body temperature, and animals obtain this energy from food. The primary source of energy for animals is carbohydrates, mainly glucose. Glucose is called the body's fuel. The digestible carbohydrates in an animal's diet are converted to glucose molecules through a series of catabolic chemical reactions. Adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, is the primary energy currency in cells. ATP stores energy in phosphate ester bonds. ATP releases energy when the phosphodiester bonds are broken and ATP is converted to ADP in a phosphate group. ATP is 34.2, nutrition and energy production 963 produced by the oxidative reactions in the cytoplasm and mitochondrion of the cell, where carbohydrates, proteins, and fats undergo a series of metabolic reactions collectively called cellular respiration. For example, 
Glycolysis is a series of reactions in which glucose is converted to pyruvic acid and some of its chemical potential energy is transferred to NADH and ATP. ATP is required for all cellular functions. It is used to build the organic molecules that are required for cells and tissues. It provides energy for muscle contraction and for the transmission of electrical signals in the nervous system. When the amount of ATP is available in excess of the body's requirements, the liver uses the excess ATP and excess glucose to produce molecules called glycogen. Glycogen is a polymeric form of glucose and is stored in the liver and skeletal muscle cells. When blood sugar drops, the liver releases glucose from stores of glycogen. Skeletal muscle converts glycogen to glucose during intense exercise. The process of converting glucose and excess ATP to glycogen and the storage of excess energy is an evolutionarily important step in helping animals deal with mobility, food shortages, and famine. Everyday connection obesity Obesity is a major health concern in the United States, and there is a growing focus on reducing obesity and the diseases it may lead to, such as TYPE2 diabetes, cancers of the colon and breast, and cardiovascular disease. How does the food consumed contribute to obesity? Fatty foods are calorie-dense, meaning that they have more calories per unit mass than carbohydrates or proteins. One gram of carbohydrates has four calories, one gram of protein has four calories, and one gram of fat has nine calories. Animals tend to seek lipid-rich food for their higher energy content. The signals of hunger, time to eat, and satiety, time to stop eating, are controlled in the hypothalamus region of the brain. Foods that are rich in fatty acids tend to promote satiety more than foods that are rich only in carbohydrates. Excess carbohydrate and ATP are used by the liver to synthesize glycogen. The pyruvate produced during glycolysis is used to synthesize fatty acids. When there is more glucose in the body than required, the resulting excess pyruvate is converted into molecules that eventually result in the synthesis of fatty acids within the body. These fatty acids are stored in adipose cells the fat cells in the mammalian body whose primary role is to store fat for later use. It is important to note that some animals benefit from obesity. Polar bears and seals need body fat for insulation and to keep them from losing body heat during Arctic winters. When food is scarce, stored body fat provides energy for maintaining homeostasis. Fats prevent famine in mammals, allowing them to access energy when food is not available on a daily basis. Fats are stored when a large kill is made or lots of food is available. 34.3 Digestive system processes By the end of this section, you will be able to do the following. Describe the process of digestion. Detail the steps involved in digestion and absorption. Define elimination. Explain the role of both the small and large intestines in absorption obtaining nutrition and energy from food as a multi-step process. For true animals, the first step is ingestion, the act of taking in food. This is followed by digestion, absorption, and elimination. In the following sections, each of these steps will be discussed in detail. Ingestion The large molecules found in intact food cannot pass through the cell membranes. Food needs to be broken into smaller particles so that animals can harness the nutrients and organic molecules. The first step in this process is ingestion. Ingestion is the process of taking in food through the mouth. Invertebrates, the teeth, saliva, and tongue play important roles in mastication, preparing the food into bolus. While the food is being mechanically broken down, the enzymes in saliva begin to chemically process the food as well. The combined action of these processes modifies the food from large particles to a soft mass that can be swallowed and can travel the length of the esophagus. Everyday connection obesity Obesity is a major health concern in the United States and there is a growing focus on reducing obesity and the diseases it may lead to, such as TYPE2 diabetes, cancers of the colon and breast, and cardiovascular disease. How does the food consumed contribute to obesity? Fatty foods are calorie-dense, meaning that they have more calories per unit mass than carbohydrates or proteins. One gram of carbohydrates has four calories, one gram of protein has four calories, and one gram of fat has nine calories. Animals tend to seek lipid-rich food for their higher energy content. The signals of hunger, time to eat, and satiety, time to stop eating, are controlled in the hypothalamus region of the brain. Foods that are rich in fatty acids tend to promote satiety more than foods that are rich only in carbohydrates. Excess carbohydrate and ATP are used by the liver to synthesize glycogen. 
The pyruvate produced during glycolysis is used to synthesize fatty acids. When there is more glucose in the body than required, the resulting excess pyruvate is converted into molecules that eventually result in the synthesis of fatty acids within the body. These fatty acids are stored in adipose cells, the fat cells in the mammalian body whose primary role is to store fat for later use. It is important to note that some animals benefit from obesity. Polar bears and seals need body fat for insulation and to keep them from losing body heat during Arctic winters. When food is scarce, stored body fat provides energy for maintaining homeostasis. Fats prevent famine in mammals, allowing them to access energy when food is not available on a daily basis. Fats are stored when a large kill is made or lots of food is available. 964 Chapter 34 Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Access for Free at OpenStacks.org Digestion and Absorption Digestion is the mechanical and chemical breakdown of food into small organic fragments. It is important to break down macromolecules into smaller fragments that are of suitable size for absorption across the digestive epithelium. Large, complex molecules of proteins, polysaccharides, and lipids must be reduced to simpler particles such as simple sugar before they can be absorbed by the digestive epithelial cells. Different organs play specific roles in the digestive process. The animal diet needs carbohydrates, protein, and fat, as well as vitamins and inorganic components for nutritional balance. How each of these components is digested is discussed in the following sections. Carbohydrates The digestion of carbohydrates begins in the mouth. The salivary enzyme amylase begins the breakdown of food starches into maltose, a disaccharide. As the bolus of food travels through the esophagus to the stomach, no significant digestion of carbohydrates takes place. The esophagus produces no digestive enzymes but does produce mucus for lubrication. The acidic environment in the stomach stops the action of the amylase enzyme. The next step of carbohydrate digestion takes place in the duodenum. Recall that the chyme from the stomach enters the duodenum and mixes with the digestive secretion from the pancreas, liver, and gallbladder. Pancreatic juices also contain amylase, which continues the breakdown of starch and glycogen into maltose, a disaccharide. The disaccharides are broken down into monosaccharides by enzymes called maltases, sucrases, and lactases which are also present in the brush border of the small intestinal wall. Maltase breaks down maltose into glucose. Other disaccharides, such as sucrose and lactose are broken down by sucrase and lactase, respectively. Sucrase breaks down sucrose, or table sugar, into glucose and fructose, and lactase breaks down lactose, or milk sugar, into glucose and galactose. The monosaccharides, glucose, thus produced are absorbed and then can be used in metabolic pathways to harness energy. The monosaccharides are transported across the intestinal epithelium into the bloodstream to be transported to the different cells in the body. The steps in carbohydrate digestion are summarized in Figure 34.16 and Table 34.5. Figure 34.16 Digestion of carbohydrates is performed by several enzymes. Starch and glycogen are broken down into glucose by amylase and maltase. Sucrose, table sugar, and lactose, milk sugar, are broken down by sucrase and lactase, respectively. Digestion of carbohydrates enzyme produced by site of action substrate acting on end products salivary amylase salivary glands mouth polysaccharides, starch, disaccharides, maltose, oligosaccharides pancreatic amylase pancreas small intestine polysaccharides, starch, disaccharides, maltose, monosaccharides oligosaccharides lining of the intestine, brush border membrane small intestine disaccharides monosaccharides, e.g., glucose, fructose, galactose, table 34.5-34.3, digestive system processes 965 protein a large part of protein digestion takes place in the stomach. The enzyme pepsin plays an important role in the digestion of proteins by breaking down the intact protein to peptides, which are short chains of 4 to 9 amino acids. In the duodenum, other enzymes, trypsin, elastase, and chymotrypsin, act on the peptides reducing them to smaller peptides. Trypsin elastase, carboxypeptidase, and chymotrypsin are produced by the pancreas and released into the duodenum where they act on the chyme. 
Further breakdown of peptides to single amino acids is aided by enzymes called peptidases, those that break down peptides. Specifically, carboxypeptidase, dipeptidase, and aminopeptidase play important roles in reducing the peptides to free amino acids. The amino acids are absorbed into the bloodstream through the small intestines. The steps in protein digestion are summarized in Figure 34.17 and Table 34.6. Figure 34.17 Protein digestion is a multi-step process that begins in the stomach and continues through the intestines. Digestion of protein enzyme produced by site of action substrate acting on end products pepsin stomach chief cells stomach proteins peptides trypsin elastase chymotrypsin pancreas small intestine proteins peptides table 34.6966 chapter 34 animal nutrition and the digestive system access for free at openstax.org Enzyme produced by site of action substrate acting on end products carboxypeptidase pancreas small intestine peptides amino acids and peptides aminopeptidase dipeptidase lining of intestine small intestine peptides amino acids table 34.6 lipids lipid digestion begins in the stomach with the aid of lingual lipase and gastric lipase. However, the bulk of lipid digestion occurs in the small intestine due to pancreatic lipase. When chyme enters the duodenum, the hormonal responses trigger the release of bile, which is produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder. Bile aids in the digestion of lipids, primarily triglycerides by emulsification. Emulsification is a process in which large lipid globules are broken down into several small lipid globules. These small globules are more widely distributed in the chyme rather than forming large aggregates. Lipids are hydrophobic substances. In the presence of water, they will aggregate to form globules to minimize exposure to water. Bile contains bile salts, which are amphipathic, meaning they contain hydrophobic and hydrophilic parts. Thus, the bile salts hydrophilic side can interface with water on one side and the hydrophobic side interfaces with lipids on the other. By doing so, bile salts emulsify large lipid globules into small lipid globules. Why is emulsification important for digestion of lipids? Pancreatic juices contain enzymes called lipases, enzymes that break down lipids. If the lipid in the chyme aggregates into large globules, very little surface area of the lipids is available for the lipases to act on, leaving lipid digestion incomplete. By forming an emulsion, bile salts increase the available surface area of the lipids many-fold. The pancreatic lipases can then act on the lipids more efficiently and digest them, as detailed in figure 34.18. Lipases break down the lipids into fatty acids and glycerides. These molecules can pass through the plasma membrane of the cell and enter the epithelial cells of the intestinal lining. The bile salts surround long-chain fatty acids and monoglycerides forming tiny spheres called micelles. The micelles move into the brush border of the small intestine absorptive cells where the long-chain fatty acids and monoglycerides diffuse out of the micelles into the absorptive cells leaving the micelles behind in the chyme. The long-chain fatty acids and monoglycerides recombine in the absorptive cells to form triglycerides, which aggregate into globules and become coated with proteins. These large spheres are called chylomicrons. Chylomicrons contain triglycerides, cholesterol, and other lipids and have proteins on their surface. The surface is also composed of the hydrophilic phosphate, heads, of phospholipids. Together, they enable the chylomicron to move in an aqueous environment without exposing the lipids to water. Chylomicrons leave the absorptive cells via exocytosis. Chylomicrons enter the lymphatic vessels, and then enter the blood in the subclavian vein. 34.3 Digestive system processes 967 figure 34.18 lipids are digested and absorbed in the small intestine. Vitamins Vitamins can be either water-soluble or lipid-soluble. Fat-soluble vitamins are absorbed in the same manner as lipids. It is important to consume some amount of dietary lipid to aid the absorption of lipid-soluble vitamins. Water-soluble vitamins can be directly absorbed into the bloodstream from the intestine. Link to learning this website, http colon slash slash openstacks.org slash l slash digest underscore enzymes closing parenthesis has an overview of the digestion of protein, fat, and carbohydrates. 968 Chapter 34, Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Access for free at openstacks.org.
Visual Connection Figure 34.19 Mechanical and Chemical Digestion of Food Takes Place in Many Steps, Beginning in the Mouth and Ending in the Rectum. Which of the following statements about digestive processes is true? A. Amylase, maltase, and lactase in the mouth digest carbohydrates. B. Trypsin and lipase in the stomach digest protein. C. Bile emulsifies lipids in the small intestine. D. No food is absorbed until the small intestine. Elimination The final step in digestion is the elimination of undigested food content and waste products. The undigested food material enters the colon, where most of the water is reabsorbed. Recall that the colon is also home to the microflora called intestinal flora that aid in the digestion process. The semi-solid waste is moved through the colon by peristaltic movements of the muscle and is stored in the rectum. As the rectum expands in response to storage of fecal matter, it triggers the neural signals required to set up the urge to eliminate. The solid waste is eliminated through the anus using peristaltic movements of the rectum. Common problems with elimination diarrhea and constipation are some of the most common health concerns that affect digestion. Constipation is a condition where the feces are hardened because of excess water removal in the colon. In contrast, if enough water is not removed from the feces, it results in diarrhea. Many bacteria, including the ones that cause cholera, affect the proteins involved in water reabsorption in the colon and result in excessive diarrhea. 34.3. Digestive system processes 969 emesis emesis, or vomiting, is elimination of food by forceful expulsion through the mouth. It is often in response to an irritant that affects the digestive tract, including but not limited to viruses, bacteria, emotions, sites, and food poisoning. This forceful expulsion of the food is due to the strong contractions produced by the stomach muscles. The process of emesis is regulated by the medulla. 34.4 Digestive System Regulation By the end of this section, you will be able to do the following. Discuss the role of neural regulation in digestive processes. Explain how hormones regulate digestion The brain is the control center for the sensation of hunger and satiety. The functions of the digestive system are regulated through neural and hormonal responses. Neural responses to food in reaction to the smell, sight, or thought of food, like that shown in figure 34.20, the first response is that of salivation. The salivary glands secrete more saliva in response to stimulation by the autonomic nervous system triggered by food in preparation for digestion. Simultaneously, the stomach begins to produce hydrochloric acid to digest the food. Recall that the peristaltic movements of the esophagus and other organs of the digestive tract are under the control of the brain. The brain prepares these muscles for movement as well. When the stomach is full, the part of the brain that detects satiety signals fullness. There are three overlapping phases of gastric control, the cephalic phase, the gastric phase, and the intestinal phase. Each requires many enzymes and is under neural control as well. Figure 34.20 Seeing a plate of food triggers the secretion of saliva in the mouth and the production of HCL in the stomach. Credit. Kelly Bailey, digestive phases The response to food begins even before food enters the mouth. The first phase of ingestion, called the cephalic phase, is controlled by the neural response to the stimulus provided by food. All aspects, such as sight, sense, and smell, trigger the neural responses resulting in salivation and secretion of gastric juices. The gastric and salivary secretion in the cephalic phase can also take place due to the thought of food. Right now, if you think about a piece of chocolate or a crispy potato chip, the increase in salivation is a cephalic phase response to the thought. The central nervous system prepares the stomach to receive food. The gastric phase begins once the food arrives in the stomach. It builds on the stimulation provided during the cephalic phase. Gastric acids and enzymes process the ingested materials. The gastric phase is stimulated by 1. Distension of the stomach, 2. A decrease in the pH of the gastric contents, and 3. The presence of undigested material. This phase consists of local, hormonal, and neural responses. These responses stimulate secretions and powerful contractions. 970 Chapter 34 Animal Nutrition and the Digestive System Access for free at OpenStax.org The intestinal phase begins when chyme enters the small intestine triggering digestive secretions. This phase controls the rate of gastric emptying. In addition to gastrin emptying, 
When chyme enters the small intestine, it triggers other hormonal and neural events that coordinate the activities of the intestinal tract, pancreas, liver, and gallbladder. Hormonal responses to food The endocrine system controls the response of the various glands in the body and the release of hormones at the appropriate times. One of the important factors under hormonal control is the stomach acid environment. During the gastric phase, the hormone gastrin is secreted by G-cells in the stomach in response to the presence of proteins. Gastrin stimulates the release of stomach acid, or hydrochloric acid, HCL, which aids in the digestion of the proteins. However, when the stomach is emptied, the acidic environment need not be maintained and a hormone called somatostatin stops the release of hydrochloric acid. This is controlled by a negative feedback mechanism. In the duodenum, digestive secretions from the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder play an important role in digesting chyme during the intestinal phase. In order to neutralize the acidic chyme, a hormone called secretin stimulates the pancreas to produce alkaline bicarbonate solution and deliver it to the duodenum. Secretin acts in tandem with another hormone called cholecystokinin CCK. Not only does CCK stimulate the pancreas to produce the requisite pancreatic juices, it also stimulates the gallbladder to release bile into the duodenum. Link to learning visit this website, http colon slash slash openstacks.org slash l slash enteric underscore endo closing parenthesis to learn more about the endocrine system. Review the text and watch the animation of how control is implemented in the endocrine system. Another level of hormonal control occurs in response to the composition of food. Foods high in lipids take a long time to digest. A hormone called gastric inhibitory peptide is secreted by the small intestine to slow down the peristaltic movements of the intestine to allow fatty foods more time to be digested and absorbed. Understanding the hormonal control of the digestive system is an important area of ongoing research. Scientists are exploring the role of each hormone in the digestive process and developing ways to target these hormones. Advances could lead to knowledge that may help to battle the obesity epidemic.